bad weather here and across the country is creating a lot of problems in the airports too. Right now, more than 120 flights are canceled, 127 to be exact, in and out of DIA today. And for the second day in a row, most of those canceled are Southwest and SkyWest. If you're catching a flight today, just make sure to double check the status before you head out. Speaking of closures, the Denver Zoo will be closed again today because it's too cold for the animals and emissions testing with Air Care Colorado will delay their opening until one o'clock this afternoon. Well, some of the biggest snow, uh, snow totals from the system so far have been in the southwestern part of Colorado. CDOT crews spent yesterday on Red Mountain Pass doing avalanche mitigation. There's a considerable avalanche danger down there. Triggered several slide paths. One brought down more than eight feet of snow. CDOT is going to be doing more mitigation work on Red Mountain Pass and other areas in southwestern Colorado over the next few days. In the past 24 hours, most of the high country has gone from low or moderate avalanche avalanche danger to considerable. Right now, the Aspen, Steamboat, San Juans, Grand Mesa, and Gunnison zones are all under an avalanche watch. Colorado Avalanche Information Center says we're going to see the most dangerous avalanche conditions of the season so far. Be very, very careful in the backcountry. New overnight, Douglas County School Board directors approved their timeline for hiring a new superintendent. The job is posted and now they're going to screen candidates. As of last night, there are eight applicants. An email blast will be sent out Friday asking people to be on forum panels. Then next Thursday, board members will conduct finalist interviews in public and plan to vote on those finalists. Then on March 10th, the community, staff and students can ask the finalist questions in a feedback forum. A potential contract offer could come on March 22nd after spring break. During last night's public comment, several principals said they want to say. After all, while a superintendent may be the captain of the ship, we are the ones who make it sail. We have a deep understanding of our schools and can provide you input on what our stakeholders desire and respect in a district leader. The previous hiring process, which last occurred with now uh, when now former superintendent Corey Wise was hired, was spread out over five months into five phases. An update now on breaking news that we first told you about yesterday. Possible human remains were found where an explosion leveled a home in Westminster. Cadaver dogs made that discovery about 12 hours after the explosion, which happened near Highway 36 in Federal. The uh, Westminster fire crews arrived on the scene. The house was destroyed, nothing left. Two neighboring homes also had extensive damage. The investigation into the cause will likely take several weeks. What you're watching is a ring camera video of that explosion. And happening at the state capitol, a state house panel advanced a bill that aims to curb the rise in catalytic converter thefts. House Bill 1217 would create a grant program for public information campaigns, victim assistance, and catalytic converter identification and tracking efforts. According to the Colorado Auto Theft Prevention Authority, catalytic converter thefts in Colorado increased by more than 5,000% from 2019 to 2021. The House also passed a bill modifying the language of Colorado's sexual assault assault law. Right now, Colorado legally defines sexual assault as, quote, submission against the victim's will. The new bill would change it to say, quote, knowing the victim does not consent. The current law was written in the 1970s. Sponsors of this bill say that this will clarify the law to help jurors make decisions in sex assault cases. The bill now goes to the state Senate. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belonged to his neighbors. This is a flagrant violation of international law and it demands a firm response from the international community. President Biden has issued new sanctions on two large Russian banks and on Russian elites. He is promising harsher penalties if Russia keeps stepping up its aggression against Ukraine. With sanctions taking effect, a lot of people here in Colorado and around the world are wondering what's going to happen next. Nine News reporter Julissa Arizari spoke to a CU Denver professor to talk about those possibilities. CU Denver may be thousands of miles away. But for any student, what's happening between Russia and Ukraine? Professor Christoph Steffens calls. History in the making. And uh, what Russia is doing right now is it's like throwing us back to the 19th century. Over the last few days, the threat of Russian invasion has become a reality. Russian troops rolled into rebel-held areas in eastern Ukraine after Putin recognized their independence. 
The U.S. and other countries responded by ordering heavy sanctions against Russia, a move Stefan says could put Putin in jeopardy if these sanctions hit hard. Russia is uh, so vulnerable economically because most of their income comes from oil and gas exports. Uh, if we hit those, if we close them down, these pipelines, and um, then it's going to be extremely difficult, uh, also for the Russian state. It is, of course, a problem for, definitely a, a problem for Putin to stay in power if these sanctions hit hard. Steffens says the possibility of Russian tanks making their way into Kiev by the end of the week is real. What happens after that is a piece of history that is yet to be written. Jalisa Rosari, Nine News. The international sanctions and the prospect of war are impacting world markets and sending oil prices soaring, which could ultimately drive up the price of gas here in the United States. Let's take a live look outside in Boulder right now. It is downright cold once again. Grab the layers because we're expecting these frigid temperatures all day. The show must go on for one Colorado sports team, though. The Rapids still plan to play outside tonight. Yep, there is a soccer game. The head coach says that the cold might actually be their advantage. Yeah, 9 News meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen is hanging out at Dick's Sporting Goods Park this morning. Corey, the wind chill tonight its going to be really cold. Yeah, even if the air temperature gets up to 10, 11 degrees for game time, the wind chill could still be down there near zero, and it could be the coldest game the Rapids ever played. It'd be close anyways. If they use the uh, weather station here at Central Park, hit negative two this morning, the coldest game they ever played was negative three, so it's going to be close. And like you said, I talked to some of the players and the coach, uh, Frazier, yesterday, and they were kind of describing it as unpleasant, uh, not exactly the ideal conditions, but they they're really concerned about their opponents. You know, Comunicaciones, who's coming in here from Guatemala, uh, it's been 80 degrees and sunny all week down there. So you could see why maybe we could have a little bit of an advantage going into this game. But those fans out here, they're always rowdy, they're always hyped, and they're going to be out here no matter what the temperatures are like tonight. All right, Corey, thanks. It'll be an interesting night, that's for sure. Party fans. Party mm -hmm. fans.